Bonnie, back again with Timeless Themes, stories from the Hebrew and Christian Bible. Today our story is the story of Ruth, and our theme is kindness to people from another country. Now, Naomi and um, Elimelech were Israelites, but Israel hadn't had any rain for a long, long time, and it caused a famine in their land. Do you know what a famine is? It's when the crops don't grow and there's not enough food for everybody, and they starve. Well, this was happening in Israel. And Elimelech, they had two little sons, and Elimelech wanted to take care of his family. And he said to Naomi, I'm thinking about moving to another country, the country of Moab. I hear that it's rained there, and they have plenty of uh, crops, and, and everything's good. And she said, but, but what about our religion? You know, we're Israelites, we're Hebrews, and they're not. And he says, we'll still, we'll still worship our God, but I think we should move there. Well, Naomi said, okay. So, change of scene. We're going to move to Moab. Moab was a bigger city than Bethlehem, where they lived. And the people were nice to them there. They were kind. They let them buy land. And they did well. Their crops grew. Their sons grew. But a really sad thing happened. Elimelech died. Now, in those days, people died from all kinds of things. They died from disease. They died from uh, wild animals. They died from a lot of things. And Ruth was left with her two boys. But they were growing up by now. And so only men could own property, but Elimelech had left everything to his sons. So they were, they did pretty well. And the time came that they should get married. So they married Moab girls, because that's who they were. That's where they were. Whoops. Wrong one. And so the Moab girls they married were named Ruth and Orpha. Here's Ruth, here's Orpha. And they got along pretty well. They, were, uh, they didn't have children yet. They were still young. But another tragedy happened. Tragedies were always happening to these Hebrews in these stories, weren't they? Both of her sons died. And that left her alone with her two, two daughters-in-law. And they couldn't own property. They didn't have any children to inherit. So Naomi said to them, you know, I think I better go back to Bethlehem where I'm from. I have relatives there and they will take care of me. And Orpha said, she said, you go on home to your parents. They'll take care of you. And Orpha didn't like it too much, but she said, okay, and she went back to her family. But Naomi fell down on her knees in front of Ruth, fell down on her knees in front of Naomi and said, oh, please, please don't ask me to leave you. Don't ask me not to follow you. I want to go where you go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. So Naomi, what could she do? She said, okay, you can come with me. And they, so they went to Bethlehem. Back to the family home. And it 
was harvest time. Yeah. It had rained now. They did. They weren't in a famine any longer, and they had, their crops had grown, and they were harvesting. Let's go back to the computer for a minute and learn a couple of vocabulary words. Um, let's take the second one first. When they harvested the wheat, now here's, let's look at modern day. Do you see these big old things in the fields out there? My kids used to call them cinnamon rolls, but that's the big tractors and the big machines come in and roll up the wheat like this. Um, actually, I think they take the wheat out of it and this is what's left over that they feed the animals. Um, but in the old days, they had those big scythe like you see the Grim Reaper carrying, and they would cut the wheat, cut the wheat, and then they would use a cord and bind them into a shock. That's called a shock. But they were kind people, and they knew that everybody wasn't rich and didn't have fields, so they would leave some of the uh, stalks of wheat in the fields for the people to, next vocabulary word, glean. That's what they call them, picking up the leftovers after they had made their shock. Um, the next step was to thresh it, to separate the seed by beating it, and then they would grind it and then into flour, and then they could make their bread. Okay, so here they are in the um, fields. The workers are out in the fields and they're making shock and um, they're leaving some. So Ruth knew that Naomi did not have a lot of money. They should, their relatives were taking care of them but they still didn't have a lot. So she thought she would go out and pick up some grain she would glean from the fields and take it home to Naomi, who would then do all those steps we just talked about to make br bread with. What she didn't know was that this, these fields were owned by this rich man called Boaz. And Boaz was, had come to look over his fields, and he saw this beautiful young woman out. Well, not only was she beautiful, but she was very kind. There were other people out gleaning, too, and she would let them even go ahead of her and take food, and she didn't try to hoard it and take it all for herself. She was a very kind woman. So he called his, one of his workers over, and he said, Who is this woman? that's gleaning in my field now. And he said, oh, that's Ruth. She came back from Moab with Naomi. And her, uh, her husband died, and Naomi's husband died, and she came back, and she's very good to Naomi and helped her out. And he said to the, to the workers, you leave some extra for her make sure that there's plenty left for her to glean. So they did. And after all the wheat was gathered, they had, it was like our Thanksgiving. They had a big party, a harvest party. And they had a feast, and they had music and dancing. And Ruth was there, and Boaz was there, and he went over to Ruth, and he said, Boaz, I own all these fields, and I've seen you gleaning in my fields. And she says, oh yes, I was trying to get some for my mother-in-law, for Naomi. And he said, well, I saw how kind you were, and how um, beautiful you are on the outside and the inside. And in those days, when your husband died, one of your relatives your distant relatives, but still in the family, was supposed to marry you. That's the way it worked out. So the widows would have somebody to support them. 
And he said to her, I'd like to marry, I'm a distant relative of yours, and I'd like to marry you. And she was like pretty overwhelmed. Wow, this rich man wanted to marry her and take care of her. And she said, well, sure. <laughs> so they got married. And she says, but, but my mother-in-law, Naomi, I still want to take care of her. And he says, oh, yes. Yes, she can live with us, and we'll, we'll take care of her. And so that's what happened. They got married, and they even had a baby named Obed. And that's the end of this story. But it's also, our theme today is kindness from people from other countries. And before we had all this coronavirus and staying at home, we were very concerned about people that were trying to come into our country because a lot of things happened to them in their country. People killed their relatives, uh, tried to make them join gangs and do things that they didn't want to do, sell drugs. And so they wanted to come to our country where they thought they would be safe. And that was a big problem. It still is, but not so much now because of, of this virus that everybody is kind of staying away and staying home. Um, but I'm sure that it will happen again. Do you know we have people in our own church that have come from other countries? Quite a few. And at the end of this, I'm hoping to interview one of them that you may know because he was in our uh, class we talked about David and he played uh, Goliath and we traced around him so we're going to try to have that later um, but now I have this song for you about this harvest <laughs> 